everybody, Jeff Dunham. So, uh, Matt, you know what we're doing today, right? Don't tell everybody. We're getting ready to take a car to uh, Lavaggio, which is uh, an amazing detail place here in Southern California. The, the top notch, most, uh, the nicest cars, the most exotic cars are there. And I have a car that's going to be detailed by Lavaggio. Matt, this car does deserve it, right? I, I think just based on its rarity. It is. It is an unbelievably rare car, and it causes, I mean, People stop me at stoplights, uh, they wave to me, they give me thumbs up at car shows, it draws a crowd, and um, <laughs> I, I don't like cars that, that, that people think you're a jerk for driving them. I think this is one where maybe people are confused as to why you're driving it. So ladies and gentlemen, a very rare vehicle that I have today. One of the best examples, the nicest examples we ever find, the 1988 Yugo. <laughs> it does beg the question, Jeff. Why? 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 I, I, because I love cars that start conversations. Everybody of a certain age knew somebody that grew up with a Pacer or a Pinto or a Yugo. And, uh, you know, this has been branded as one of the worst cars ever sold in the United States or around the world because they were built in Yugoslavia. I'm not quite sure it's as bad as everybody painted it because it came out in, uh, wouldn't we say, uh, Malcolm Bricklin, who started the Bricklin, he imported them from 85 to 92. It started out at 3,900 bucks. That's how much this thing was. That's $10,000 in today's money. For a new car. A brand new car, $3,900. So immediately people are gonna start making fun of you for having a car that costs 3,900 bucks. And uh, you know, there were questions about materials and safety and all that, legit. But I, I, I really think after driving this thing around, I would say that their slogan should have been, you go, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the bottom line, the lowest model was the GV plus automatic. GV, the Yugo GV, it stood for good value. <laughs> then there was the GV Sport, the GVL, the GVS. This is the GVS, second to the highest. And then they came out with the Cabrio, which is the Cabriolet, and it was the convertible version, and that's the rarest one. They only made 300 and something of those. But it's a, this is a four-speed automatic, so it's a 1.1 liter. That's what it is. The most criticism, the biggest problem this car had was uh, criticism over design, safety, and reliability. You know. Yeah, the big three. <laughs> the big three. <laughs> but I'm telling you, when you drive this thing, you go, hang on a second. I, I feel like I'm driving a Datsun from the same era or a Toyota. And I'm telling you, it drives better than any Volkswagen from that era. Uh, uh, any bug, it shifts better. Oh, no, you're going to get letters. <laughs> I'm going to get letters. I am. You can't deny it. When you get in there and you change those gears, Matt, you know what gear you're in. How many Volkswagens and how many kit cars do I have uh, that are Volkswagen transmissions that you don't know what gear you're in every, for, for, every, ever? Every, every one of them. <laughs> every, every one of them, yeah, that's yeah. right. So uh, 85 to 92, imported by Malcolm Bricklin, a total of 141,651 were sold in the U.S. Their peak year was in 87, when they sold almost 49,000 of them. Then it fell to 92, in 92 to 1,400. So in, in just a couple years, uh, you know, five years, it went from 48,000 a year to 1,400 a year. And again, design, safety, reliability, things would fall apart. But here's how it was divided up. Electrical parts were produced in Slovenia. Interior fittings were made in Croatia. Brakes were produced in Croatia. Electrical engine parts were produced in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, seat belts, uh, locks, and mirrors were produced in Macedonia. The rest of the car parts and final assembly was done in Serbia. So what? <laughs> How in the world did they ship all that stuff to one place for four grand? It was a guy in a wagon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a covered wagon with donkeys. Yeah. So Matt, uh, we're gonna drive it over to Lavaggio, but I want you to get do most of the driving today because I want you to be able to tell me what you think. I'm, the gearbox on this thing is positive. Uh, I had it on the 101 the other day doing 85 miles an hour. But it was fine. It was humming along. It's got about a 50 horsepower motor in it. It's amazing. Even car guys that, that know good cars will go, oh my gosh, it's a Yugo. And they'll stop and look at it. And, uh, you know, it, it's ridiculous. Come on. Might as well, we'll show you under the hood when we get to Lafaggio. All right, let's do it. All right, well, let me start it for you anyway. Okay, hang on. But here. Okay, so here we go. Look at that. It's, been, it si it's been sitting here for a week, just like that. I'm telling you, it's not that bad. <laughs> 
but I want you to drive this thing and see what you think. All right. All right? Let's do it. Okay. Okay, Matt, so you're driving, and I went to my iPhone instead of your fancy camera. What do you, what do you think? We're doing 65 miles an hour. Yeah. We're, keep, we're actually passing cars. Yeah. I mean, uh, it doesn't take very much getting used to. Yeah. It seems to go and turn and brake like you would expect. Yeah. Oh, you're going fast. Uh, <laughs> we're not. That well, it depends on the speedometer. I'm doing 65. I'm yeah. just not in control of the Yugo. So this is making oh, me yeah. nervous. Yeah. But just a minute ago, you were like, uh, I think you're a little too close. <laughs> I was, there were like 17 car lengths in front of us. <laughs> hey, look, it tracks straight. It, it, the suspension is yeah. not dramatic. Well, like, now we're on a better part of the freeway, and it's, uh, you know, the one thing that I notice is there's no tack, right. so I don't know really what we're. I mean, it sounds like we're kind of winding it out here. It's well, at 65 uh, miles an hour. Yeah, and what's interesting is that I've never seen this before. There's actually tick marks on the speedometer that tell you when you're supposed to shift. So oh, I, okay, I see them now. Yeah. So like at 23 miles an hour for first to second, and, and about uh, 38, 38 miles an hour from second to third. When you're going to fourth at a little over 55. And we're in fourth, obviously now. Yeah. And it is winding up a little bit, but it's not terrible. But you also got to remember, back in 1980, whatever, the speed limit predominantly everywhere was 55, not 65. Right. So yep. you know this is right on target for what the law was at the time. Yep. You, you're spot on with your description of the advertising campaign. Should have been you go. It's really not that bad. <laughs> All right, so we pull over the gas station. We don't need gas. We just, I, I wanted to change seats. And Matt, you finished driving. We'll talk about it as we're driving. First, I want to show the seat belts, right? So this is the old school way where you, here's your lap belt. But um, back then, then you also had to do your shoulder harness, which is across like that. Do you remember the cars that w when you stopped and put it in park, it would go Oh, yeah, Remember absolutely. that? And this part would go beep, beep, beep. My buddy Gary Brightwell, and then when you'd, you'd uh, I guess when you put it in gear or whatever, I forget how it would do it, but then we'd go beep, 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 and come back this and do this, right? My buddy Gary Brightwell called it watch your ice cream because he and a buddy, <laughs> he, he and a buddy had just stopped and got some ice cream, ice cream cones, and his buddy didn't realize it and whatever, he put it in gear and this thing comes and just literally bleep, wipes the ice cream off onto his chest. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, for a while that was like uh, federally mandated. Is that right? Yeah, it was a whole thing. Oh, well. All right, we got to do a U-turn here. We're one exit away from Lavaggio. And uh, Matt, what did you think? It, um, it, it, it satisfies all the requirements of a car. A $4,000 car. Yeah, but better than that. I would say it's better than a $4,000 car. You know what? I think one of the, the biggest misstep that they made was uh, uh, pricing it that low because the perception of value, is that what it is? Yeah, sure. Um, is gone. When you have a $4,000 car, you expect it to be a crappy car. If they had priced it at $5,500 at that time, I think it would have made a world of difference. So I, I do think that was a giant misstep that they, they tried to make it affordable, but it was at the sacrifice of people thinking that it was a garbage little car. All right, so we're gonna get on the freeway again. Okay, we'll show everybody what it's like to get on the freeway in a Yugo. There's some cars that you drive and go, oh my gosh, there's not enough power. How can I get up to speed to get on this freeway? But it, it, it's just right there. Right. Yeah, there's just enough that you, you you have enough power to get going, and it's not like, ah, and we've all driven those. Yes. Yeah. I remember one time we were in your uh, Volkswagen bus. The bus. That's one of them, yeah. And mm. it took like 45 minutes to get up to 60. All right. Can we beat this guy in the motorhome? Oh, Lord. <laughs> look at that. I mean, look, we're up to 70 miles an hour now, and uh, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? We're zipping along here with traffic, and it's smooth. The suspension is good. I mean, you were driving, and we're going 77 miles an hour right now. Let's see if the brakes work. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so that's a, that's a pretty good run right there. I mean, I, I, you know, I have no complaints whatsoever. 
<laughs> said no you go owner ever <laughs> yep all right so we're going to be talking to dustin he's a he's the go-to guy there's the look at the fancy sign at lavaggio they have flowers all right here we go Th this is a first ladies and gentlemen no Yugo has ever entered the property of Lavaggio. Look, this guy brought his car in a trailer. What a waste. <laughs> Why didn't we trailer this? <laughs> yeah, we should have trailered it. He's like, why is that thing here? <laughs> all right, so look at all these beautiful vehicles going around. Them. I'm probably terrifying everyone. <laughs> you know, I'm going to park it right here. Dustin, how are you? Good to see you, Jeff. Good to see you. How's everything? Thanks for letting us bring this in. What a beauty! Yeah, I, I was wow. just thanks for playing the playing wow. the game with us here. I, as as we were pulling in, I said this is a first, right? We get a lot of unique cars, but I think you brought the most unique in today. <laughs> <laughs> so I got this thing, and it's got to be one of the most uh, well maintained, all original Yugos out there, which uh, is almost sad to say. What year is it? It's, it well, it's uh, built in. What do we say? August of '87, so I assume it's an '88. How many models? It says 34,000. But when you look under the hood and you look at this thing, hasn't been repainted. There's not a lot of pitting. I don't think there's a one in front of that. I think it sat somewhere for a long time. You know, I say this respectfully. This is definitely a Jeff Dunham part. <laughs> <laughs> that part will edit it out. <laughs> you know what? Listen, what a time capsule. It's awesome. Yeah. We need to preserve vehicles. And yep. I've never really seen it preserve a Yugo like this. No, so thank and, you for and, posterity. No, I love doing that because, uh, like I, I say it over and over again, I love cars that start conversations. And when somebody comes into the warehouse and they see this, I guarantee you, you put a you you, you put the fanciest half a million dollar car next to it, and a, a good number of people will stop at this car first because you don't see them anywhere. Nobody in their right mind restores and maintains a car like this. And I think that you're going to blow people away because it's you know it's basically in the wrapper still. Yeah, yeah let's then the, the all right. I'll, I'll meet you guys in there, direct you in, and okay, that's great. Awesome. All right. Hey, I forgot to show you one thing. Had to roll down my window, actually roll it. But you need to back up a little bit. So when you turn on the actual Yugo radio, if you're not getting a good signal, you just reach up here and do this. <laughs> there. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> look, at, look at the locks on this thing, it's cool. Ugh. Green and red, right? <laughs> so funny. The gaps are great, straight as an arrow. I, I'm not even seeing any games. Wow. Yeah, the spare tire is under the hood. <laughs> I've never seen this before. Right. Isn't that great? It's because you had to save room for your cargo. I would love to clean this thing up and make it look as pretty as it possibly can. I, I mean, there's a question. There's an original label right there. Did we take that off and, and touch this up, paint it, repaint that? So there's an argument for patina. Yep. Keep it original. Yep. 100%. 100%. Yep. What a vibe. So you saw this and had to have it. <laughs> well, we've always joked about getting a Yugo because it has such a horrible reputation. And I was always just mainly curious to see how bad could horrible be. Oh, by the way, when I turned on the fan for the first time, I was going down the freeway, yes. and uh, I got uh, leaves and eggshell, pieces of eggshell and twigs. I'm pretty sure I blew most of a, a mouse nest into my own face. Nice. Right. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, and I think it was in there. There we go. Oh. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Still works, too. It's a little tool thing. What is that? This, guy. this thing, so it's not burnt, it's just black. What? Come on, that's burnt. <laughs> smells like Yugoslavia. <laughs> I don't know what that smells like. And you see the toolkit, right? Yugo toolkit? Wow. Nice. That'd be interesting to see what's in there. All the tools. Uh, the tools even say Yugo. Wow. What? I bet if you look at all of the advertisements in the bottom, it's a Comes with Eagle two kits. Yeah, I just I just want to know with, with the length of this arm, how, how many foot pounds? Uh, foot pounds did they <laughs> torque those nuts to? Four, four foot pounds per <laughs> bolt. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Or Yugoslavians are unbelievably strong. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a great shape. You break that. 
So we're going to do a full paint correction, play bar, polish, relax, sealant, four, four or five steps, get it up on the rack, the whole undercarriage, throw everything we have at it. I just found a penny. Going to be good luck. Good luck cleaning this car. <laughs> So we're on our way back. I don't know how long it's been, Matt, what's it been? Because I left on a trip with the family and now we're going back, but we're going back to pick up the Yugo. Dustin told me they did the exterior, the paint. They did the undercarriage, which I never talked to them about. So he actually sent me a few pictures. I'm like, oh, we didn't talk about that, but they, they did the whole thing. And then they went through the engine bay. Uh, he didn't send me any pictures yet. So I have not seen the engine bay. I've not seen uh, the paint. Uh, uh, he just sent me a couple pictures of the undercarriage to let me know what they were getting into. So is it safe to say this is probably the cleanest Yugo in the country? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, it's probably the cleanest Yugo, maybe ever, because I don't think they were this clean when they made them. <laughs> Alright, so Dustin, we're here. I have not looked at it yet. Not looked at the Yugo. Were there any surprises? The surprises were the amount of people that saw that car in that bay. There could be a Ferrari or Lamborghini sitting there, and they were looking at your Yugo. That <laughs> I, shocked me. And I did not pay you to say that. No. I, I think the reason is because it's the white whale. They were so cheap um, and got such a bad reputation, nobody took care of them. And now when you see one that's in decent shape, it's like, do you remember that? What is that? It's a big question mark. Yeah, it's, it's uh, but it looks, I think you're going to be happy. Yeah. Well, let's go take a look. I can't wait to see. Let's do it. All right. This place always smells nice. It's my cologne. Okay. <laughs> it's your cologne. You ready? Sure. Can we do it? Sure, why not? We're going to roll it. Do it the right way. Here we go. <laughs> look at that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, because it was, it was getting a little bit chalky, wasn't it? Wow. I mean, it looks like a new car. Yeah. And, and, you know, like we say, the, the guy touched up a couple things here and there. It looks like you did it with a paintbrush, but from, you know, three feet away, it's tough to see. But that is unbelievable. Oh, and it smells, it smells good, too. <laughs> All right, but the big thing is, you got to look under the hood. Okay. Oh, man, that's great. Wow, that looks, like, brand new. That's great. You don't get much more original than this, yeah. right? And I think I think all things considered, a car is going to have some nicks and scratches, and this car is just in really phenomenal condition. That is laugh out loud funny. <laughs> so Wait a minute, that doesn't like bolt down. <laughs> you, you can just lift it right I out. I just lifted it, and there's no nothing to bolt it down to. Holy moly! Wow, and there's the jack. Did you see the jack? How funny! Yeah, it's not bolted down to anything. Just this rack right here. But again, the mind-blowing part to me, being a car guy, yeah. was the amount of attention. We literally would have a Lamborghini race car here that a guy <laughs> drove. I mean, and people are looking at a Yugo. Well, again, I just love cars that start conversations. And uh, and this puts a smile on people's faces for, for every reason, either because it's great, because it's stupid, whatever it is. But Dustin, you guys have done a great job. This is really cool. I, I can't wait to take it to the car show and see what people think of it. And then I'll walk away because I don't want to ask, answer the same question 80 times. Why? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Gotta love it. Great.